Hello and welcome to Hunter Mountain, New York, stop number one of the 1997 Bud Light American Snowboard Tour, presented by Chevy S10 Pickups. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane, you are just in time for the second run, the final runs of the giant slalom competition here at Hunter Mountain. Chris Massaro on course in his first run. He got a 79.44, which means he's going to have to make up a lot of time on this run. He needs a 70.34. We'll see how he's doing in the top of the course. He's letting it run. And Lee, making up time is going to be difficult today. The conditions very treacherous. We've had snow, rain, high winds, and the course is not looking that great. The rain has been making that snow, getting all slushy. Riders having a hard time holding the line. The ruts are getting deeper. The chops getting harder. Massaro makes it out of the top part of the course, looking pretty solid. Chris Massaro riding for Team Paul Mitchell, looking very good, as you said, Lee. But also, another problem with the course is the visibility they have to deal with. You know, we are in kind of a whiteout condition. With the rain on the goggles, Chris makes it through the delay over the knoll, getting chopped a little bit down at the bottom. You can see him trying to suck those bumps up. It slows down every time that board hops. Christopher Massaro will finish off his second run as he comes across the line and trips the timer at 72.70. That will currently put him in second place with a combine of 152.14. And we are off and running at Hunter Mountain, New York. Welcome to the East Coast as Bud Light and the American Snowboard Tour present the Chevy S10 pickup, Hunter Mountain Open. Hello again, everyone. Todd Harris along with the editor of Snowboarding Online, Lee Crane. Lee, today we've got the giant slalom here at Hunter Mountain. Todd, we've got an extremely rough course today. We had pouring rain yesterday. They weren't able to get the cats up on the course. So huge bumps and ruts. The riders are going to have a rough time, but the survivors are going to win. A new addition on this year's tour is the Paul Mitchell Riders Cup. Similar to the Tour de France, we'll be able to keep track of the top men and women in both alpine and freestyle by the wearing of the black jersey. Aside from encouraging the riders to do the entire tour, it also means that the top men and women are going to get an additional $4,000 at the end of the tour. We'll also have highlights of the half pipe competition as well as the dual slalom competition, but right now let's go back to the top of the GS course. Up right now, William Von Gilder, his first run time at 85.23. He's going to need to get a 64.55 if he wants to take the lead. Current standings look like this. Ryan Mullen out in front. Christopher Massaro is tucked into second. Then it's Peter Cook, Ruben Cam, Nathan Galpin, and Felix Dorval. So it's William Von Gilder trying to crack that top five here on his second run. William sliding out. You see him get twisted around. His upper body got around behind him. That slowed him down a lot right at the top. Those two first gates, very critical portion of the course. Scrubbing precious seconds, trying to make it up here through the flat section. A nice clean line, not scrubbing a lot of snow, Lee. Let's talk again, though, about the visibility. From our vantage point, it looks very foggy. The top starts to clear up towards the bottom. It starts to clear up. However, those raindrops hitting on your goggles can cause some problems. Remember, William needs to go six seconds faster than Chris Massaro just went down if he wants to take the lead. And in the top section of the course, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to pull that off. Here comes William Von Gilder across the knoll, and here's where it starts to get very treacherous. And there he is putting hands down, trying to maintain balance, and he is down. You could see William starting to have problems as he came over the knoll, and it caught up with him after two gates. No possible way he's going to make it onto the podium today. So Von Gilder finishes his bumpy ride, posts a time of 74.62, which will put him in ninth overall. At this point, he's just happy to finish. We'll be back to Hunter Mountain, New York, with more of the Bud Light American Snowboard Tour after this. The Bud Light American Snowboard Tour is brought to you by Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light. And by Chevy S10, like a rock.
and welcome back to Hunter Mountain, New York, stop number one of the 1997 Bud Light American Snowboard Tour, presented by Bud Light and Chevy S10 Pickups. Todd Harris, along with Lee Crane, our next competitor on the GS course will be Eric Baldwin. Eric, a veteran of the American Snowboard Tour. We'll see how he does. He gets out of the gate fine around those first two gates. We saw some guys getting spun on that second gate. Eric did all right. Extremely treacherous throughout this course. You don't think of the East Coast as having very high mountains, but here in New York, they've carved a nice little run lead through the rock. Right out of a cliff. Eric Baldwin needs a 71.50 if he wants to take that top spot on the podium. He is gunning for it right now, staying tight and low. He's 23 years old. Eric rolling through the flat portion of the course, staying right on line. Not a whole lot of scrubbing coming from Eric Baldwin. Now here comes the tricky part. He comes over the knoll, and this is what he's got to face before he hits the finish line. Now remember, this is exactly the spot where William had some problems. Eric negotiating it fine, scrubbing a little bit of speed there, rolling into the knoll, but he should be okay through the finish. And it looked like Eric Baldwin shaved a little speed off there just to survive. It may have paid off for him. His second run time, a 75.20, gives him a combine of 153.08, and that will slide him into third position. But Eric can't rest yet. We still have five men to go in the giant slalom competition, including Jeff Archibald and Peter Thorndike. Before we get to that, let's go back and have a look at the women's GS competition at her mountain. The women were the first to take a crack at this tricky giant slalom course. Like the men, the winner would be determined by the best combined time after two runs. And after one run, only four women were below the 82nd mark. Kim Stacy would make run two in 83.19 seconds, setting the mark for the rest to aim for. Canadian Julie Rayom had the third fastest first run time of 76.88, and her second run time of 83.02 would be just enough to push her into a temporary lead. American Julie Zell finished run one in second place with a 76.83. But her second run would not be enough to hold on to second place and she would end up in third. Lisa Coslow had the fastest time in the first run by over two seconds and by every indication she was prepared to do the same in run number two. She was very fast and seemed to enjoy the Hunter Mountain course. Tell you what, Hunter Mountain has some really steep terrain. They have some really good terrain um, to run races on, and this hill is one of the best hills we've raced on. So we were all really psyched about it. Lisa Coslow smoked the field. Her second run in 80.75, and her combined time was four seconds faster than her closest competitor. Congratulations to all of our female GS competitors and to Lisa Coslow, the first to don the Black Paul Five Mitchell Riders Cup Five. jersey. Back to the men's GS competition. Our next competitor will be Matt Morency. Matt's first run time, a 77.87. That means he's going to need a 71.51 if he wants to take the lead. He gets a good start out of the gate and makes it through that critical second gate, rolling onto the steep section below the cliff. And what's amazing about this course, Lee, is the top section is literally carved out of rock, so it's very steep. As Lisa Coslow said, they've got some great steeps here at Hunter Mountain. Now he's making his way down to that flatter section where he cuts through the glade. A lot of people not carrying enough speed through the middle portion of the course. Matt doing well as he rolls into the steep section. He is doing very well, Lee, as we check our mid-mountain timing. Matt Morrency is on track to be our new leader, and he looks very good, as you pointed out, going through the middle section, carrying a lot of speed, because we all know that front section is so very treacherous, and more than likely, he's going to scrub a little bit as he comes down the front. But what he's got to face is Ryan Mullen out in front, then it's Chris Massaro, Eric Baldwin. Those are the three times he needs to get in front of if he wants to be on top of the podium. Back to the front of the knoll, he's making his way down. He's almost to the finish line. Matt carried a lot of speed over that knoll where some of the other riders have been having problems. He's looking extremely smooth at the bottom of the course, and this time is going to be a fast one. Matt Morency posts a time of 70.58, which makes him our new leader with a combine of 148.45. And it's Nate Sims.
The American Snowboard Tour features professional snowboarders from around the world competing for more than $155,000 in total tour prize money. Athletes will have the opportunity to win AST ranking points for overall titles and the $27,000 Paul Mitchell Riders Cup. Top riders from this tour will compete in the 1997-98 Grand Prix Series in hopes of making the 1998 U.S. Olympic team and competing in Nagano, Japan as snowboarding makes its Olympic debut featuring halfpipe and giant slalom. Welcome back to the first stop of the American Snowboard Tour, the Chevy S10 Pickup Hunter Mountain Open. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane. The giant slalom racing continues as the racers take their second runs down a bumpy and very difficult course set on the cliff and Eisenhower runs. Mark Dotzer has now completed his work for the day after posting the 12th fastest time on the first course. He put together a better second run time of 73.87. A good performance, but against this field, he ranked only ninth. Young Travis McLean of the Stratton Mountain School proved that he's been doing his homework as he followed his third fastest first run time with a 68.86 second run time. His combined time of 143.26 put him atop the leaderboard with just two racers to go. We'll find out a little later if he can hang on to the top spot. Soft snow and deep ruts were lurking behind the serene setting of the Hunter Mountain Dual Slalom Course. Power and finesse became the most useful tools as each new race brought competitors closer to the final. In the men's competition, Matt Mitchell seemed to be the man to beat as he made his way up the ladder past Seth Barnes in the quarters and Eric Baldwin in the semis. Travis McLean was also on a roll, taking down Kevin Blaggies and Matthew Morrency to meet his friend Matt in the final. Run number one saw Matt Mitchell blast out of the start, only to lose it two gates down, giving McLean the maximum 1.34 advantage. First run, I just stiffened up, no focus. Couldn't pull it all together. It takes two runs to win, so it's kind of Travis had me by a second 3-4, which was the advantage, and then I just couldn't put it all together. So second run was good. Travis McLean would give up a little time to Matt on run two, but would still become the first AST dual slalom champion of the season. In the women's division, Lisa Cosblow would once again take top honors, placing her even farther ahead in the Paul Mitchell Riders Cup standings. Well, I'm pretty psyched about it, and hope you know. I mean, for Paul Mitchell, I, I mean, they've been a great sponsor. They've been a great supporter of the tour, and so it's some good visibility for them to be able to have us wear um, the leader jerseys. And I'm just, I'm privileged. I feel privileged, and I'm really psyched about it. The first AST halfpipe event of the season was anything but shy of freestyle talent. The new 1997 knockout format treated everyone to some fast-paced head-to-head competition. In the women's division, Kyla Duffy would take the win over Jamie McLeod in the consolation final. But it was Trisha Burns who would take the win and first place in the event against Orly Sayers. The men's division was a definite who's who of North American snowboarding. Jamil Khan, Spencer Tamblin, and JJ Collier would all get knocked out as the final was organized. In the runoff for third and fourth place, Seth Westcott would beat out Matthew Cass. The main event was between Jeff Rushy and Frank Wells. Both of them put in strong performances and it could have gone either way. The initial word was that Frank Wells had won his first pro event. But to everyone's surprise, an error was found in the tally, and Brushy would end up with the win. If it was my my judgment, I'd give it to Frank. Frank deserves it, but but the score said that, so I mean, I, I feel dumb, but it's cool. I had fun today. 
Congratulations to all our Halfpipe champions at Hunter Mountain. A disappointing turn of events for Frank Wells, but he's certain to be on top of the podium in the very near future. Here's a look at the men's final standings, which will also reflect the $27,000 Riders' Cup standings in the freestyle division. Hotel accommodations provided by the Via Vesalia in Hunter, New York. We've caught up with one of the top riders on the American Snowboard Tour, Jason Only from Team Paul Mitchell. Jason, you think about the East Coast, you don't think about very steep terrain, but we've got it here at Hunter. Yeah, my impression of the East Coast was usually pretty flat and icy, but Hunter really has a lot to offer. Um, 1600 vertical, two new lifts, great base lodge, and it's got some really steep terrain that's quite challenging. Hunter Mountain, the snowmaking capital of the world, is the largest ski area closest to most major cities in the east. Only two hours from New York City, Hunter offers 15 lifts and 53 trails on three mountains, all covered by 100% snowmaking. Hunter is the ideal playground for skiers and snowboarders of all levels. Hunter averages 160 ski days per season. And when summer comes around, there are an abundance of festivals and activities to make it a wonderful off-season destination. Hunter Mountain, host of the American Snowboard Tour. We are down to our final two competitors in the men's GS competition. Next up, it'll be Jeff Archibald from South Ogden, Utah. Now, he had the second fastest time in the first run, and just prior to him sliding the gate, we talked to him about the conditions. He must be doing something right. Well... It's the first race of the year, so I was just feeling it out. And as you can see, the conditions are pretty brutal. So I mean, I just attacked and went with it, and it ended up working out. I heard you coming over that last pitch, and you were kind of screaming and yelling. <laughs> what was that about? I was just trying to psych myself up for that big, huge pitch with all the bumps. So I, didn't, I just wanted to give her there and not give up any speed. Is there anyone else here who you're thinking about when you're going to the second run? Like, you're going to have to go a little faster than, oh, say, you know. No, I don't think that way. I, I erase the course and let the cards fall where they may. Because you'll wear yourself sick if you start doing that stuff. Jeff Archibald does not look too worried right now as he jumps out of the gate. His first run time, a 74.15, which means he needs a 69.10 if he wants to take the second run. Well, we've been talking about conditions all day, Lee, and they seem to be getting worse. The rain is really coming down. The course is soggy and mushy. Is he going to be able to pull that off? If anyone can do it, Jeff Archibald can. You can notice how he's staying really low. He scrubbed a little time there. You saw him hop back on, but he's staying on line. A lot of times when the guys are going super fast, what looks like mistakes are actually them barely hanging on, and they're going a lot faster than they look like they're going. Well, Jeff Archibald is flat out flying right now as he makes his way into the glade section. He is carrying a lot of speed as he heads towards that knoll. Jeff only has that one section to worry about. That's the delay before the knoll. We'll see if he can carry the speed into it. Here comes through the delay. He stutters a little bit and drops over onto a toe side into the bottom section, putting his hand down to keep him going straight, but he looks like he is flying right now. The legs working like shock absorbers. He hops over that last bump. He is just moving down through here, and he is gonna come across the finish line with a time of 67.67. He is our new leader with a combined total of 141.82 lead, and he was cruising. Jeff Archibald did what no one else could do in the two critical sections of the course. He carried speed through the flats and was able to survive the knoll at the bottom of the hill in perfect form. Those two things made the big difference today, and Jeff Archibald is out on top. However, we still have one racer to go. One more racer to go who sits atop the cliff run right now, waiting his turn. Jeff Archibald, as you pointed out, though, perfect form, and he totally charged it at the bottom of the hill. So Jeff Archibald will play the waiting game, sit and wait for our final competitor here, which is Peter Thorndike. Now, on his first run, he had a 72.30, which was the fastest, and he knows what to expect on run number two. Um, it's soft and they salted in spots, so it's really bumpy. And people are getting thrown around a lot, and I got tossed a lot that last run. But I don't know. I think it'll be good if we just have a solid run and you know, stay over it. Ten, five, four, three, two, one.
Peter Thorndike getting out to a solid start. Remember, he needs a 69.50. That means he doesn't need as fast of a run as Jeff Archibald needed to take the lead. So we do have some room for error. And a big error right there as he slides out, almost comes to a complete standstill. He's back up and running once again and lays somewhat of a disadvantage to be running last today. This course is falling apart. The snow not holding up well. Peter doing a good job coming through the middle section, though. Goes down a little there, but you notice he didn't slow down a whole lot. He just kind of bumped the ground and popped right back up, carrying a lot of speed through the flat section. We're going to see if he can make it over that knoll, if he can stay on it through the bottom. Peter holding that line, going through the delay and coming over the knoll into that big toe side turn. Hops up a little bit, but other than that, looking pretty tight. Here's the part that all our riders say throws you around so much. He hops over that last little knoll, comes down to the finish line, and he is almost there. The clock keeps ticking, and his second run time, not enough. He picks up a 70.13, a combine of 142.43. So unofficially, it looks like it will be Jeff Archibald out of Utah winning, but we'll have the official word after this. The Bud Light American Snowboard Tour has been brought to you by Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light. And by Paul Mitchell Professional Salon Hair Care Products. We welcome you back to Hunter Mountain, New York, and ESPN's coverage of the 1997 Bud Light American Snowboard Tour. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane. Third place has already been dished out. That went to Travis McLean. Here is our second place finisher, Peter Thorndike and Lee coming into the second run. He had the fastest first time, but he really got tossed around on run number two. That course was so rutted up, he had two problems. He almost stopped near the top, and then he sat in the middle of the course. He was lucky to finish as well as he did. Well, the man who charged it today in this discipline, especially in that second run, Lee, was Jeff Archibald out of South Ogden, Utah. Jeff came in, he needed a 69.10, and he turned in a 67.67. That was the fastest time of the day. The GS results are as follows. Archibald, Thorndike, McLean, Mornsey, and Massaro. Right now, let's have a look at our Paul Mitchell $27,000 Riders Cup standings. In the Alpine discipline, our top male rider, Travis McLean, top female rider, Lisa Cosglow. In the freestyle category is Jeff Brushy for the men and Trisha Burns for the women. Let's check in with Lee Crane at the GS finish. Todd, I'm here with the winner of today's giant slalom, Jeff Archibald. Jeff, this was a, this was a Bronco busting course today. Oh man, it was a rodeo. It was just hold on, knees bounce and hit you in the face. It was a street fight. So when you started out in the Stargate and you headed on to the course, what was going through your mind? Just that, just hold on. It's going to feel like hell, but just hold on and, you know, everything will turn out good. Was there anyone you were worried about in that second run? Uh, no. I mean, I don't think like that. I just, I just race my race and, you know, let it happen. And that's probably a good strategy for Jeff to follow as it did get him into the first place spot right here at Hunter Mountain. Todd? Back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Lee, and that will conclude the Bud Light American Snowboard Tour Chevy S10 pickup Hunter Mountain Open. We had a great day here in the East Coast despite the changing conditions. We want to congratulate our winners. For the women, it was Lisa Coslow. For the men, Jeff Archibald. Our next stop, Kirkwood, California, on the West Coast. Check your local listings. For Lee Crane, I'm Todd Harris. We'll see you there right here on ESPN. <laughs>